All right. We are live with uh, CEO of Van Wagon, Harold Hughes. Yep. So tell us really quick, what is Van Wagon? What, what is the problem that you guys saw in the market, and how are you solving it? We looked at two main problems. One was being able to resell a ticket to a fan of your team, mm -hmm. and the other challenge was being able to sell a ticket and actually pop pocket money. I mean, if you think about it as a sports fan, you're not responsible for kicking game-winning field goals or catching Hail Marys. Your one job is to protect home field advantage and cheer really, really loudly. And so when you sell your ticket in the open market to anybody, you kind of give away that one mm -hmm. uh, thing that you're responsible for. And so that's why we built Bandwagon. So I'm really introspective. And mm. one of the things that's really important as an entrepreneur is to be introspective because if you don't know what you're bad at, mm -hmm. you will lose a lot of time. You may think that you are the best marketing person ever and you're the person that should be doing tweets and social and creating graphics, but you're just no good at it. So what my team and I focus a lot on is understanding our major mission. Our major mission is to focus on creating ultimate fan experience. So we start at the fan focus. We're saying, okay, if we can satisfy a million fans, we can be a million dollar company. If right. we can satisfy a billion fans, we can be a billion dollar company. And so it's really about focusing on that fan experience and each person understanding what their role has to do with uh, that part of the solutions. From a week to week standpoint, we do one-on-ones, so every Monday we have one-on-one -on -one meetings, they're about 30 to 45 minutes, and I have a call with each one of them individually, and so that's important for us because we need to make sure that the week's starting off great, alright, what's on our objective tables today, what are we going to try and accomplish, and then two, what can I do for you, what resources do you need that I'm not providing for you? And when I started out, it was just myself, and then I quickly realized that I couldn't do it all, I needed more hours in the day, I needed another set of hands, and how do I figure out how to go, and so you find that the first thing that happens is normally it's your circle, your friend circle, maybe former co-workers, and you'll figure out, can we get along, can we mm -hmm. have the same lines of still establish our friendship, but also be able to help hold ourselves accountable on a professional mm -hmm. standpoint. We had a speaker, uh, Scott Painter from True Car and Fair, and he can't, got on stage and he said, uh, your role as a CEO is to hire the most five, or the five to six most important people in your company. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it that way, it doesn't really matter what the role is, but you've got to hire the five to six most important human beings, mm -hmm. and that'll set your trajectory for your whole company. So true. One of the blessings I found with when we started expanding our staff was I had to know our mission like the back of my hands to be able to bring on the right people. The challenge of the entrepreneur, which I also think is a nice little exciting piece, is not only do you get to think about the future and down the road, but you also get to try and figure out, okay, what will it take to get to that point? And mm -hmm. some of that really is the weekly goal or the daily goal. Right. So when you're hiring your next person who wants to be long term, you say, hey, listen, I need your help to help me build this to a 300,000 person viewership or readership, and this is how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so essentially, yes, this is your role today, but ultimately I'd like you to be over our 300,000 people this. And then right. that allows the person who is poor thinking to say, oh, that'd be awesome, that'd be great. And I'd get to be employee four or employee right. six. Now I was going to ask how you can keep your staff focused, especially because, especially when you're in a startup, yeah. the sky's the limit. For like sure. Every day you Find think of something new that you could leverage yep. and new way that you could make money. And that's the hard part as CEO. <laughs> you've got to keep everyone yeah. saying, no, that would be awesome. But today though, right. we need to do exactly. this. Exactly. And when you're training your team, what attributes are you looking for and how do you kind of keep them focused when it comes to the new business development? And that's one of the things we, you know, we looked at when we started the team. We said, well, what's most important? Is the skill set the most important? Mm, right now, it's not. Um, but when you looked at it more and more, we said, okay, well, then we need people who are passionate about what we're doing. You know, someone on my team will say, hey, Harold, you know what I was just thinking about? What if we did this? And I'll say, wow, I'd never thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, when you're building a team, it's, uh, diversity is really important. And in the short run, you're going to have a slower start than the people who are homogeneous and because mm -hmm. you got to learn to communicate and right. learn people's different styles but at the end of the day when it when when diversity teams diverse teams pick up is when you've got the person who keeps their ketchup in the cabinet and the person who keeps their ketchup in the fridge mm -hmm. because our goal and mission is, is big and broad enough it allows us to do some different things from an avenue standpoint and really get to where we're able to say hey these different things can come up bandwagon but we're really good at this mm -hmm. and if we're really good at this, we can bring on a partner that does that really right. well. And we can do this and they can do that and we can still provide a great solution. What are other like, I mean, aha moments from, you know, growing up or from just, you know, normal life situations that come up and you realize like, I can leverage these things. So my dad always was, you know, working for himself, kind of, you know, electrician by trade and really doing all he could to provide for my family. My mom was an awesome caregiver and she also, you know, when she started working, it was really important in our household to have that, that resource come in. And so for us, 
when I got out of school, it was, you know, when I went to school, it was, hey, I'm going to create this opportunity mm -hmm. um, for my family. And so now that I'm out of school and have a family and I'm growing all those different things, it's been really a factor of how do you focus on giving back in, in certain uh, rewarding ways? There's not an entrepreneur watching, listening, any of this who could say, man, that, that guy sounded like he was saying some pretty interesting things. I'd love to catch up with him that wouldn't get a responded email from me in a couple of minutes. Yeah. And that's me by design. I like to, I want to help. I want to find ways to connect with people. Right. So I literally carve out parts of my day that say, if a person were to ask me to a coffee meeting, no, I'm not a morning person, but if I have to get up for an 8 a.m. coffee meeting, I have my day scheduled to where my regular day that's not affecting my day. Right. So I'm not the person that says, oh, I can't fit it in. No, I, I build my day to have room for coffee meetings right. with anyone to help anyone. And so being able to help those others is really, really important. As we grow, we know we want to build this entire community. For me, it's been like learning how to not be such a perfectionist and like yeah, no, be as, okay with being. As an entrepreneur, you'll, <laughs> you'll find that you can't be perfect. You, you want to not be a specialist and be a jack of all trades right. as a CEO, and then you find your specialist. But yeah, perfection is the enemy of good and a lot of times progress. So if you waited to launch something because it wasn't perfect, or if you're waiting for your website to look a certain kind of way, you probably missed the window. I mean, right. You'll probably find you're watching TV later, and you're like, oh, I had that idea. And you just either there's inaction, or there was I was waiting, or I was mm -hmm. trying. And some people just went and did. Right. So what is one key takeaway for a younger Harold? <laughs> um, somebody that's like trying to figure out how to make that leap. Yeah, I think the number one thing that I would lend to anyone uh, who's thinking about starting is owning their own. I, t I talk to a lot of students and young people about sales and the importance mm -hmm. of sales. My mentors and my friends will say, oh, Harold, you're a salesperson. And I think we all should be. I think that mm -hmm. it's important that we all should be salespeople because we're all selling one thing mm -hmm. and that's yourself. Like you have to be able to sell yourself. Right. So whether that's you getting a new job or you being able to get this grant for the nonprofit you're starting or you getting the small business loan or you trying to get a date, you're trying to sell yourself. And, yeah. and one of the newest things that I focused on this year um, is being the asset. Mm -hmm. Can you be the asset that people are willing to pay for? So we've all had jobs mm -hmm. where someone says, yep, you were worth $35,000, so I'll give you a check for this much per, per month or every two weeks, and that is not you being the asset. That's the company being the asset, the product you're pushing mm. being the asset. But when someone sits down and says, hey, I would love to talk to you about this business challenge I'm having. I know that you have an expertise in it. And then you say, okay, great. I'm happy to talk to you for 30 minutes or an hour about this and give you just my high level input. And if you want to work on something later, we've got other ways we can work together. And then you can decide, okay, I'm this much per hour or I'll create this for you as a project. And that's when you become the asset. So owning your brand leads you to being able to create that value mm. for yourself. If somebody goes in a startup or not, they've got to know who they are as a person outside of that company that they're yeah. working with. I mean, otherwise, I mean, how do you sit down and employ evaluations? Yeah. Like, how do you know where you're heading in 10 years? I mean, yeah. that's always the first thing I ask in the interview is, where do you see yourself at the end of this year and then in five years? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. first thing I ask, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's such an important question. And yeah. they don't really have an idea of, I mean, it's okay if you don't know exactly what that looks like, but you should know what your strengths are, what you're passionate about, and yeah. then like what motivates you. You and know, I, those are the big things. I think another great question that you should add to your interviewing list and anyone mm -hmm. is uh, what brought you here today? Mm -hmm. What is it that That's puts good. you in front of me today? And the way that person answers that question will let, will tell you a lot about them. You know, someone may go really introspective and say, yeah, I wasn't progressing at the rate I wanted to in my last job and I saw this company and it's always been a company I've wanted to work for and yeah, like, took the opportunity and someone may say I've got two kids to feed and I will do anything mm -hmm. and you learn a lot about a person on the, an on the answer to a question that's that open of, so what brings you here today mm -hmm. like what how did you get to where we are right now mm -hmm. if you as a leader or a manager or hire can figure out what motivates a person you can put together a really like awesome team thanks awesome. Harold and so we want to thank the guys at Craft Draft we've clearly enjoyed our beers today. Yes. <laughs> everybody one, come to I, I must not have loved this one at all because I finished <laughs> it. So <laughs> nice. Thanks. I hope everybody has a great Monday. Thanks. See ya.